campus. There you go. So Thanks we are, for the reminder, Colleen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are recording. Anyway, um, so that it'll be available. So the FEI adopted these rules um, at the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, unfortunately, when the Equestrian Canada rulebook came out, they uh, were kind of hit, hit maybe blindsided. Uh, with some of the major additions to the jumper rules and omissions as well. And these didn't become um, into effect until about the end of February. So a lot of the horse shows didn't understand that this was happening. And I'm sure a few of the horse shows at the beginning of the year were not uh, following the updated rules. So that's why we're here. So we're going to carry on, first of all, with um, our very first one in the general regulations. Uh, and all of these are now uh, included in the new rule books. You can get uh, ones that with the red uh, printing that is the new part, or you can get a clean version as well. Uh, I carry it as an official in my iPad so that I can ref refer to all of these um, when you need to. As of course, everybody said, how come I can't do that? Where's the rule? So it's always good to keep reviewing so that you know where to find these things. So the first one is uh, in our general regs for cruelty and abuse and inhumane treatment. Um, basically, this is pretty much standard, except the FEI has uh, adopted the practice of not allowing the hairs on the head, uh, such as no, uh, their muzzle hair and the um, eye sensory hairs to be clipped. And if your horse comes with a clean shaven muzzle, you will not be allowed to participate in FEI classes. Now, uh, EC has um, gently uh, ad maybe adopting this in the future. Um, so you can clip your hunters if you need to, uh, but basically I think that's coming down the pathway that we will not be able to clip those muzzle hairs in the future. But so far it's uh, not kind of less. And then the next one, there we go. Um, yes, competing, uh, with a horse with raw or bleeding sores or evidence of other blood on the horse with the exception of insect bites or other environmental causes. So um, this falls under cruelty. Um, so if um, not only a spur mark, but if there's evidence of blood anywhere else, um, of course, we always um, address the mouth bleeding uh, a, a little bit differently, but if uh, say there's a a sore underneath a boot or something like that, you definitely have to address that. Um, usually the stewards will see this as judges were so far away from the action that we won't be able to see things like that. Uh, the only time that, that as judges, uh, when the FEI, when we're close, it's when we're at the jog you're looking for uh, things like that, perhaps spur rubs or things like that as well, as well as boot rubs. Um, but uh, so it's, it's in here now that if there's raw or bleeding sores and or blood anywhere, you need to address this because you may be penalized for that by uh, disqualification, fines or eliminations. Okay, so that pretty much is easily understood. So this goes into to prize lists. Um, now what's happened is um, <laughs> you have to indicate the name of your coach. We're gonna go into coaching near the end of this and Hillary's going to address that a little bit because uh, that is coming down the line as well that you, everybody needs to declare who their coach is um, because they need to have proof of insurance. Um, 
you can be self-coached or you can be family coached, but uh, that's kind of a gray area and a fine line. So uh, this is something that is going to be in the prize list for sure. So far so good, everybody's happy? I like it. <laughs> Go back one. Back one. Electronic, electronic devices. There we go. There we go. Okay, so generally, um, you're not allowed to have electronic devices, earbuds and stuff to, from your, um, your coach to the rider, um, cell phones uh, in the ring, in the judge's box, all that kind of thing. It, that's still uh, part of the rules that we've already always put in place. But now if you have, go back, it skipped one. Ah, it keeps doing it. Bad machine. Okay, oh, yes. Now, if a competitor, say with a hearing disability, if they document this, um, you need to bring that documentation with you. And um, then it's a good thing. So you can use those, uh, to help coaches. I know I judged a fellow that had a hearing uh, impairment and nobody knew. And so we're in a two phase class and he has a rail and of course he can't hear it. So off he goes into the speed phase. Well, I'm hanging on the buzzer, nothing's happening. I'm going like, what's going on? Then they tell me afterwards that this gentleman is pretty much stone deaf. and. It's like if he would have had perhaps a device and a document to say that he could wear this device, that probably wouldn't have happened. But I tell you, it's, uh, yes. And even judges too, it's right in there. No cell phones. Uh, it's, I've had problems with foreign judges with cell phones that I would like to just throw off the balcony, but yes, uh, we need to concentrate on what we're doing. <laughs> well, I will name no name. Okay. Any other questions? So far, so good. All right. And uh, this is um, a little bit different. Um, it, this is uh, the emergency treatment basically for hives. Um, and uh, it just defines it a little bit better. Uh, sing a single dose up to 10 milligrams and then um, they have to be withdrawn for 12 hours. But if it, it, it needs to be reported, um, there's a report form that you can get. Where is it? On the... Yeah, uh, you can get it through EC. This uh, report must be given to the steward and anything else requires 24 hours. I have a picture of it here. Okay. Yeah. Um, Usually the steward will have one or, yeah. or if you have a vet at the, at the tournament, uh, they will have one of these as well, but there's and the a, links at the top there too. There you go. So, um, I mean, you know, it's with the, those ones with hives, it's just, uh, if you can, some of them are allergic to shavings, who knows what, and at least, uh, this will get them a little more comfortable and they can still compete the following day if need be, as long as all is well. Okay, <laughs> responsibilities of our judges. Yes, besides being upstanding citizens and fair and all that other stuff, <laughs> we, uh, if you see a horse in the ring that is unsound, um, or if you see blood uh, for any reason, I guess, uh, in the in in the ring, um, if there's no veterinarian and you are you strongly feel that this horse it should not be uh, shown because of lameness or because of uh, blood, that the judge's decision is final and it's not appealable. You can determine that this horse does not need to be seen in your ring. So um, 
most of the time in our shows, we don't have an attending veterinarian unless it's FEI. So, uh, you know, the thing is, is that they're serviceably sound and we all know that school horses are the, they're dudes that they are and we love them to death and some of them aren't the best, but as long as they're comfortable. And again, um, I'm not a veterinarian. Uh, I don't know very many judges that are veterinarians. So you have to be careful uh, with your decision. But if you feel strong enough that this horse shouldn't be shown, then you can say that and they have no recourse. End of story. Fair enough. Any questions? No. Okay. That's pretty much um, the changes to the general regs. Uh, there's all kinds of goodies in there. I know I'm a bad person too. I don't know all the goodies that are in there, but uh, occasionally I review these. It's, it's not a bad idea uh, just to understand the workings of the horse shows. Um, entries, points, and all that kind of stuff. So, I think we should, hang on, Colleen. I think we should note too that there are some changes in the general regs that apply to competition organizers. And if you're a competition organizer, that it's a good idea to go through the changes that are happening this year because we're not covering all the specific details for them. Correct. We got a couple coming up, but other than that, uh, this will help the general. Uh, membership as well. Um, hunters, jumpers, equitation, and hat. There we go. Okay. Um, competitions. There you go. Now um, you can have horse shows that have three different levels of Equestrian Canada's um, um, certification. So you can have a gold ring, a silver ring, a bronze ring, and uh, which is great in a way because then your school horse people um, don't have to have gold licenses and things like that. Um, so that when you have your cross railers and they're just coming into the competition world, uh, the good thing is, uh, I think that's great. But the thing is, is that the horse show prize list which hopefully everybody reads from cover to cover, needs to indicate what rings are what. So if you have cross rails up to two foot and they're bronze, then they can be bronze. Um, same thing with the silver ring. If you have like your meter jumper rings to meter 10 is silver, then they only need a silver license. Most of the people compet competing at, at the shows, except for the the school horse types or the very novice ones are probably have a gold license anyway, but at least this gives the horse shows a little more um, leeway as far as attracting some new numbers and some new people in the younger rings. I know we've had some issues with some of the horse shows that uh, the, the very novice ring is quite light these days because uh, there's other horse shows to go to, but we want to um, keep people coming to our Equestrian Canada shows because we have the proper officials. Uh, we do try to teach them if they do something that's not correct. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, well, Sue just mentioned that, yes, they, uh, the, the problem is, is that the bigger horse shows have more than two rings, um, especially here, uh, Thunderbird, if there's more than two rings, um, you can't sanction those concurrently, it, just the smaller shows with a jumper ring and a hunter ring, you could split them if you need to. Anyways, and uh, each show now can determine whether or not they'll allow ship-ins. Um, you have to put that in your prize list as well. Um, so FEI, you have to be stabled and those kind of rules apply. But for the other horse shows, I think they um, it's a good thing if they allow ship-ins. We all know that stabling is expensive and uh, it would give them a, a few more competitors, I would think. Something that's different, give it a shot. Okay, uh, this is for uh, points. Um, where did I go? Hold that thought. 
Oh, here. Um, okay. All right, so if you decide to join uh, and um, renew your gold membership in August, any of the points previous to that aren't gonna apply to anything. Uh, same thing with the CET. The CET, you have to be a member right off the get-go. And if you're not, those points won't be uh, added to your activities. So, and you need to have your proper licensing. Fair enough. Okay, here we go. This one's going to affect um, some of the smaller shows, perhaps. Um, that now there's new jump cup requirements. Um, all hunters, uh, jumpers, equitation arenas, and warm up arenas uh, need the breakaway track systems. Um, so it's mandatory. Uh, plastic cups with pins are no longer permitted anywhere. So some of the, the smaller horse shows um, hopefully will be uh, transitioning over to this. I mean, we've all used these. It's a wonderful system. It's not totally inexpensive. And um, I'm going to ask Hillary again, do you think that there's going to be any bursary set up for smaller shows to transition over? I mean, I'm talking breed shows too, because uh, I mean, sometimes we go and we will be judging, um, say an Arab hunter or an Arab jumper, which they do have. And um, what happens if you go to the venue and you don't have the tracks and the breakaway cups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I brought the, I did bring the question up, Colleen, but it's uh, in discussion right now. So I don't have a straight answer for you at this moment, but yeah, it's, uh, I have brought it up. So we can cross our fingers, hopefully, perhaps if, you know, but <laughs> yeah, what hopefully about, we can update everybody. What soon. about the provincial um, 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 bodies? Will, will they maybe uh, put that into their, would Equestrian Canada um, con contact them and see if they would put some, some bursary monies together for their smaller shows? Yeah, I can certainly um, look into that as well. Yeah, some of them might have a few already on the go. Um, I don't think Alberta does, uh, just because I'm in Alberta, but <laughs> and I've worked there in the past. So, but yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll bring that up as well. Thanks, Holly. Okay. Uh, any other discussions on that? There you go. Yeah, we have a question. Um, as a steward, how do you know if it is an FEI approved system? Some suppliers not approved have extremely similar systems, FEI like. Will EC publish a list of approved providers? Thanks, Emery, for the question. Um, Hillary, do you know? I'll pop it on the to do list. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, I mean, and I, I uh, most of the time I'm thinking, of the small shows, like we have a novice circuit in Cochrane, or we have um, uh, novice circuits in uh, that are, well, they may not be EC sanctioned. The novice circuits usually go provincial, but I mean, definitely we're talking safety here. So that's something that we kind of should move along to see, to get to see if these guys can secure uh, some for sure. Uh, breakaway cups on the back of oxers for sure. Uh, at least they can start somewhere and slowly build up their inventory. But again, if you come there um, as a as a sanctioned judge and they don't have that equipment, then what do you do? Yeah, and we have another question from Heather. Um, she's asking, is this only for EC sanctioned competitions or will it be include wild rose? Etc. I think you'd have to talk to your PTSO on that one, correct? I yeah. think so too. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to go to AEF for that one. Um, my assumption, because I used to work there, it would be it's only easy. But yeah, definitely, definitely go to go to them and ask. Well, and I mean that's the thing too is that um, this is where the safety becomes paramount because, of course, then the more novice shows, there's always a bigger 
chance of an incident happening where you need them. And um, so that's why I'm hoping that Hillary reaches out to those provinces and uh, kind of gets the ball rolling for a safety issue. And at least some of them can start upgrading their inventory. Yeah, that's the problem, Lisa. Uh, she has a, a, a comment. If that happened, could you move forward with that show? That's the thing. What do you do? Um, you know, in the previously, in the in the good old days, we used um, pencils with our our very deep hunter cups that we used on everything. So at least if it's hit hard enough, the pencils will break. Unlike the um, plastic pins. Um, of course, I generally don't go to um, a lot of the really novice shows anymore. I'm busy enough at a higher level, so I don't carry, uh, you know, a dozen pencils with me or <laughs> package a gross of pencils. So again, it that in that case, um, with an EC show, uh, knowing that that is not incorrect, that definitely would affect your insurances. Uh, I'm assuming, Hillary. Um, and Heather has another question. Um, the funding was advertised as available in 2022 and then confirmed that it was still available in 2021. Was there a notice to let organizers know that the funding was not available in 2022 when it was no longer available? Yeah. And that's Hillary again. You'll look into that. Yeah, I'll look into that. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. I know. I'm sorry. I wasn't with EC in, in 2020. So I don't know that, that bit. But um, yeah, I'll definitely check it out, Heather. Okay. All right. Let's move on then. Um, I had uh, uh, something here to add after the jump cuts before we get into. Um, anything more exciting. Um, okay. Uh, it's article G707, just for those who are listening that uh, not only officials, but everyone, um, that there is a small system of fines if uh, you are behaving badly as a competitor. And um, part of it is, you know, now we, we have a little bit of bite to what we say. Most of the time, if there's an indiscretion in the ring, we will uh, radio down to our steward and ask them to speak to the person or ask the person to come up to the judge's booth and tell them what they did and why it's incorrect. Uh, now, there's also provisions that if the indiscretion is severe enough, we can uh, find or or disqualify so for a, there's four well three different things here um jumping obstacles that aren't part of a court, current course and um you know perhaps you're at a venue that has uh, a little uh, bit of pop perhaps they have uh, uh, a grob that has a wee uh, ditch at the bottom uh, it's not part of this course, it's not flagged, and the rider decides to hop down, hop over on the way out of the ring. Well, that's not a good thing anymore. Well, not that it ever was, but uh, you can uh, find them up to $250 um, against the EC. Um, if they don't leave the ring promptly at the end of a round or after elimination, which kind of makes me smile. Uh, a lot of the big guys do that and do some flat schooling and carry on. As long as they're out of the way, I don't particularly mind, but you can also disqualify and fine a hundred dollars. And after elimination, here's a good one too, jumping more than one courtesy fence, um, you can uh, fine them a hundred dollars. Um, you know, sometimes the pros, figure that the rules don't aren't, aren't for them. So um, now at least we have, if, if you find somebody, uh, they'll say, well, where is that in the rule book? Uh, now at least we have it in the rule book so we can show them when we have some teeth. 
because that's always the thing is that uh, you um, discipline someone or warn someone and they're going like, where is that in the rule book? Uh, at least now we have uh, something that we can refer to and that's G707. I'm going to look that up. Okay, national hunters. Basically with the hunters, there's nothing new. Anybody want to discuss anything uh, as far as any of those rules go? No? Okay, moving on then. <laughs> We're all good with the hunters, I love it. Um, the one thing with the hunters I will comment on is that in one part of the rule book, it says that you must ask permission to do a courtesy fence. And another part of the rule book says you're allowed a courtesy fence. To me, uh, again, this is what happens, that the people, it's all good until it's not good. And if they're eliminated, they don't know what to do. And the coach is screaming from the end gate, jump fence one, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they don't have to ask permission. They may jump any single jump that's part of that course. They don't have to do ones that they've already done and they don't have to do the first fence. If they're having trouble, say even at a higher level with the water jump and they wanna reapproach that, you get one more kick at the cat. If they don't go over the water jump, then you're done. But um, yes, that's, I'm all, you know, as judges, we usually have a very robust day. We're sitting there, just jump a jump and get out. Everybody agree with that? Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Uh, onwards and upwards. All right. <laughs> okay. Course plan. This is uh, new. Um, it, it's uh, the time allowed don't have to be posted uh, uh, prior the, to 30 minutes before the start. Um, most of the time in the smaller events, uh, the course designers wheel their courses on the computer. So it, the course, the time allowed is on the computer. If you're at a bigger competition, a gold competition, uh, it's over 10,000 and they're actually physically measuring that, uh, the track, uh, it can be posted just prior to the course, uh, to the uh, competition starting. Um, that is uh, kind of a housekeeping issue. Uh, I ran into that one time where the coach said, because it was posted uh, 10 minutes late, that his um, person who was first was not going to go for 10 minutes. And it's just like, Ugh, really? Okay. <laughs> so we put somebody else in. Okay. Obstacles. All right, general obstacles. Uh, the, this one I kind of smile at because most of us aren't uh, doing things that are a meter 45 or more. Um, uh, yes, the, the height of the obstacles indoors must never exceed meter 65, unless of course you're doing uh, power and skill, which is puissance, um, six bar, four bar, whatever. So meter 65 indoors, there you go. Um, some of our um, major competitions, not necessarily our Equestrian Canada ones, but FEI ones can be uh, more than a meter 65. Okay, note, this is a good one. Uh, next year, uh, just a heads up, the safety cups, again, even the bigger shows may have to amend their inventory um, that the uh, safety cups for the backs of boxers are over water, top of the water is 18 millimeters and underneath is 20. And I know we have some deeper ones, but uh, the game of jumping is changing and it's becoming a game of um, not necessarily boldness, but of carefulness. And uh, this definitely 
ends up helping you with a few more rails that you can separate the good from the bad. The horses are so wonderful. They're so talented. They're so scopy these days. And the riders are generally gr uh, great and ride them well. You know, uh, you don't want to have 25 in your jump offs. So this uh, just gives you a bit of a, a help with, uh, it's only two millimeters. It's not the end of the world, but again, uh, it's definitely going to help separate the men from the boys. Okay, uh, water jump. Um, most, most people generally don't have water in their competitions. Uh, it's the same thing as above. Um, if you have um, a water jump and you're using it for training and you put uh, a vertical over it, um, all of the poles have to have safety cups and the top line has to be 18 millimeters. Um, that's, uh, that's in the rules now, so it's not coming. That's what it is. So you need to um, identify which, um, ob which safety cups uh, are the 18 millimeters. Most of the time they're a different color or uh, the jump crew or somebody can identify them with uh, um, their measurements on the bottom. Any questions? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Penalties during a round. E. Okay, here we go with our falls. Everybody loves falls. There's falls all over the place. It's all good. Um, so this one, um, if somebody is falls off prior to starting, all right, if they're not eliminated. They are now not given permission to start. And so um, now the results have to reflect that, that's all. Um, it was like that with the FEI rule books before, but now it's defined in here. Um, it makes a difference to some people. Um, you know, again, um, they're talking about maybe um, amending the FEI, um, uh, point system uh, because a lot of the riders don't want their horses to have um, recorded in their files that um, the horse had 28 faults. They will retire before the last fence. Uh, so anyways, uh, you know, this is just part of that discussion that it just did not start. Easy peasy. So again, here uh, the note for the falls uh, that uh, because most of our national shows do not have attending veterinarians, um, the, uh, you have to go back to the rule. It's the same as it always has been um, that um, any of the officiating people can remove a horse from event that from an event for 24 hours if they feel that the horse is unfit to compete or if it's a safety concern or um, you know if you feel that the fall was bad enough that they probably shouldn't and uh, again this decision is final and not appealable so again just to say, I mean, I'm not a veterinarian, but I definitely know when a horse has fallen hard and probably shouldn't be shown. Some people uh, aren't horsemen, so you have to help them along with that. That's all I can say about that. Any discussions? Everybody's happy? Okay. Okay, and here we come to the big one. All right. Um, Here's our table, and this is the big change this year. Um, this was submitted to the FEI by the USEF, and we are now, uh, all competitions run under table A, your time of faults are one for one. And that includes two phase, it's one for one, both in the power as, as well as in the speed phase. And I would like to uh, go down in the record as having my first 60 fault time fault round a few weeks ago with four jumping faults. 
So they add up in a hurry. If the, the person is not sure what to do and they're wandering around and they still end up finishing, you can get some big numbers and it's not pretty. But in the long run, it all uh, comes out in the wash exactly the same as before, more or less. Okay, there you go. Same thing, one for one. So all of your uh, farm techs need to be reprogrammed and um, it, then it's simple. I can even add up time clocks myself now. <laughs> okay. Which one? Can you go back one, one screen, Courtney? No. Uh, in all competitions question. under table A, those are all stretched. Those are all um, the lines through them are uh, not there anymore. Okay. For, for each second, every four is stroked out. All right, we're good. Okay, on, onwards and upwards. One for one, it's easy. All right, uh, so warnings, those are kind of new to the FEI as well. You can actually write a formal warning uh, and um, it kind of gives you a little bit of a bite if you have somebody that is abusive to officials, abusive to your in-gate people, uh, uh, you can uh, give them a warning um, for training issues, whatever. Um, and these need to be recorded, and I believe sent to the uh, Equestrian Canada. Is that correct? Uh, Warnings as well as yellow cards. And um, yeah, so basically it's what the indiscretion is and that you've issued. You can do a verbal warning, and then you can actually do an official written warning to that person uh, if the infraction is, is warranted. And if it still continues, then you go on to your yellow warning card, which has uh, definitely repercussions. So hopefully that's enough to make them change their evil ways and everybody's happy with that. I, al I always threaten them, um, uh, you know, how would you like a lovely piece of yellow artwork for your tack room? It's like, stop it and think about what you're doing. Just my humor, what can I say? Phyllis, don't laugh. I'm watching you. <laughs> yes, Lisa, always a verbal and then follow up with an official warning written and then your yellow card. Okay. Yeah, I, al I always document uh, my, my verbal warnings as well because, um, you know, uh, uh, Child A uses their stick after elimination. Uh, I, I will either call them up to the judge's booth, which we don't have time, or call down to the in gate, say, please have the steward chat with this person and tell them that that is against our rules. Reason is, um, you know, abuse of horse uh, and um, keep that so that if something happens, uh, you know that it's time to issue a written one. Uh, before we had that, um, I did issue one uh, for use of a whip after um, elimination, class number one, and then the person came back in exactly the same. And then it went at that point immediately to a yellow card and I talked to the coach and said that I did not want to see that horse in my ring again. And they, they sent it home. It wasn't, it didn't want to play. But again, oh. it's, they were warned first. And now you can do a written warning and then onto your yellow card, which has a lot of bite to it. Okay, any questions?
Nobody's that mean. Can we get our yellow cards online as well? Yes. I always keep a, a, a pretty one in my, uh, what happens with a yellow card? Uh, a yellow card can go to um, an arbitration board. Um, and you can be fined, you can be, uh, uh, what's the word? Suspended, right, from uh, showing. Definitely, if you get two within the same, um, two within the same uh, year, that goes to EC, and definitely you would be suspended. I think it was either. Anyways, um, so. Now we have elimination retirement or withdrawal from a jump box second round or winning round. And I mean, I always laugh at this. Uh, the, um, it's, they always say um, uh, an athlete who retires eliminates, uh, is eliminated or withdraws with permission. Um, most of the time you're told I'm not coming back. Uh, there's very few incident, incident, incidents where you would tell the rider that no, you can, you have to, you have to come, you have to come back for the jump off, because uh, we don't know the reason why they're retiring. Um, we maybe the horse if he stays for another round, maybe it doesn't feel quite right. Uh, most, you know, if the rider decides that they're not going to ride that horse, I'm fine with that. But we have these rules in place that, you know, now you're going to be um, placed equal last in the jump up after the last, all the athletes have completed, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, pretty much that's, um, I would say most of them, they don't have to I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to force anybody to, to jump another round. So end of story. And we've got um, different ones in here. Ones uh, after uh, the next one is um, athletes who don't ask permission. And so um, it's basically, in my opinion, the same because uh, they tell you and they're going to be placed after everyone that's completed. Right? So pretty much. Um, says it all. I don't know if anybody's brave enough to want anybody to know, but that wouldn't be me. Any discussions? Yeah. And that's this one's pretty much it's all they're all the same. They're just in here. One, two, and three. Yes, no, here we go. But the problem is that the next one comes up is like, if all of them decide they're not gonna jump, it's raining cats and dogs, we're not gonna jump off. Uh, if you're there and you have um, your stewards, your course designers, uh, other officials have determined that it's not that bad um, and it's not going to hurt them to jump off, um, you know, uh, then you award the prize money for um, the lowest placings for which they would have jumped off. <laughs> but uh, I can recall that happening once at Spruce Meadows and it was a big wreck. And um, the uh, OC decided with, uh, in conjunction with veterinarians uh, and the ground jury that the footing was fine and um, the riders revolted and said no. And so they, they awarded no prize money. And uh, so there you go, things happen. Let's hope it doesn't happen to you. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, That's a kismate.
my computer is from uh, work. I uh, inherited it when I retired and it's crappy. That's why the sound's probably terrible. So this one is uh, individual placing and prize giving. Uh, again, a little bit of housekeeping on the first one. And um, the second one, here we go. Any athlete who has no chance of winning a prize may be stopped. Okay. Uh, how many of you have actually done that? Anybody? You know what happened? Uh, <laughs> there's Lisa. Pretty much no one's done that because, you know, it could be a young horse if they're just rolling the poles off and it's not a wreck, uh, you know. Um, I think you'd open yourself up to some pretty serious consequences. Um, I mean, if you're judging at 10 o'clock at night and the person has uh, 30 faults and they're heading to, you know, uh, eight, maybe you should just say, hey, we're done. But I've never um, wrong person, people out for uh, that aren't going to be part of the, uh, the prize of winning. It's just, you know, there's different reasons for horses to be going around in spite of what's happening, as long as it's safe and, uh, you know. I think that's a good point. As long as it's safe, if they're racking up faults and it's extremely dangerous or, you know, you see a problem with the horse, I think that, that might be the only time that you might want to use that. True. Uh, and, and I mean, we've all uh, looked at the round uh, in the Derby from, uh, uh, from Spruce Meadows where uh, social media really uh, pinned us officials to the wall for not stopping it. Um, I recall that round and most of the rounds I don't. And um, the problem was uh, he did have one miss which was his own fault, but all of the other ones were the horse just didn't jump quite high enough. And he racked up a lot of faults after he'd won the big Grand Prix the day before. Uh, and again, social media can kill you. It's, um, uh, I read the, I read the comments um, and I just sort of shake my head that people don't understand. But again, everybody has a camera, everybody has an opinion and social media can be brutal without a doubt. It's, uh, you have to be very careful with what you say and who you address. Okay, onwards and upwards. Um. <laughs> Next, competitions. Next. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay, for those of you that actually do an accumulator, which we generally don't do a lot of here. Um, uh, now, the only change to that is, is that the joker mm, is um, an option before the finish line. So it could be the last jump, it could be the, a jump in the middle, uh, but it's now part of your course. Uh, before you used to, they had, I don't know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds to decide if they were going to jump the joker. Uh, and um, then they carried on and you did your, your uh, depending on what, if they were clear, but now that's part of the course. So you don't have that extra time taken up. Again, most, most of us don't do that. Yeah. And it's, it's for both joker competitions. So both a uh, gamblers or accumulator and, or sorry, an accumulator and a top score, so. All right. Okay, anything, any other questions on uh, jumping issues, uh, questions, comments? I see some comments coming up and I love it. I don't know everything, I mostly things, but not everything. All right, equitate, and here we go. This is the big change for our rules. Fran worked hard on this, and um, it's uh, it's a good thing, I think. Okay, so now uh, we've gone to 
two medals, the CET and the Jump Canada Hunter Medal. Um, you have to be a member and uh, now you need your membership before you do your first horse show or your points aren't gonna count. Pretty simple. Okay. And the uh, same thing with the uh, physical disability uh, as that was in the general regs, um, but they can't be in the competition. Right? You can use it slowly uh, and warming up. And now we've got the four regions. Uh, so the primary residence will be uh, defined as identified in the EC database. So you can show in other regions, but uh, your points are transferred to your home region. I think we get into that later. Next one. Okay. Uh, all the judges are the senior equitation judges. Um, uh, two for the finals and the regionals. Um, and now it's only held at gold shows. Uh, the interesting thing here is that we're trying to reimburse you for travel to Alberta. You must go through. Um, I don't know where my speech is. Colleen, I think it's actually better when you lean back a bit. I've been okay. kind of watching. Yeah, I think it's better when you lean back a bit. Okay, I can hear everybody else great, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, any, any request for reimbursement has to go through your provincial association, which I found interesting. Um, we did question Hillary on that previously, and she's going like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Uh-oh. We're black. Uh, All right, here we go. So um, this is a big one. It's all on points. Um, you can I hold a class if they're less than three and use the, that scoring for your points, which has always been in place. But uh, if you win a class, you used to be automatically qualified and now you are not. It's all based on points throughout the season. Pretty, um, pretty simple to figure that one out. Um, so the points are uh, as stated, multiplied by the number of horses competing in the class, which is great because then a win with a class of 30 is weighted much, much, uh, much heavier than a, a class of eight. Pretty simple. So again, yes, from Heather, uh, the red is in the rule book. Uh, or C, I don't know. Should be there. Uh, yeah. Should be there for the new one. Okay. All of this is gone. All right, here we go. Uh, it's uh, two phases. Uh, jumping flat, no change of tack, Mar martingales are permitted because of course, if you're using a standing or, or running over fences, you um, keep the same tack, whatever you go in and hopefully your horse goes on the flat because we've had some lovely jumpers that aren't really hack horses that, you know, it takes a, it takes a good one to show yourself off in that for sure. Okay. Okay, next one. Um, now they've gone from eight figure eights to 10. 
which is fine. Um, so, and just a little sprucing up of housekeeping for the rules and uh, additional tests can be included. Um, I mean, you can have bounces, um, whatever, to test your riders. Um, everything else is the same, 10, not a figure eight. Um, it's uh, more of a metal course. It's, you know, even though it's a hunter metal, it's still, we want to test the rider's skills. And uh, side diagonal side is just really, you know, pretty old fashioned. So. Okay. Um, and here again, it's just uh, housekeeping. Um, you don't have to test with two additional elements from your flat testing. Uh, the judge, uh, depending on the strength of your class, can do one, can do four, whatever. Uh, it depends. I mean, we all know what the strength of the classes are some years. Um, You've got a, you're on an uptrend and the, the competitors are very skilled and some years they're just moving in and they're not that skilled. Uh, you may want to uh, just tone it down a little bit, especially at the beginning of the year to, uh, with your tests. Again, it's up to you. And we all know that we have a lot of different classes to look at. Okay. So here's the big change, qualifying for the finals. Um, again, you will compete in your regional final in your, your primary where you, where you live. So you can't say live in Alberta and do a, a regional final in British Columbia. Top 20 qualify, uh, you have to have learned, earned at least one point, thank the Lord, let's hope that's true. <laughs> And you have to earn points in three classes. Uh, if a rider can't go, they'll move up so that they can get 20 as long as everybody is good with going to your regional finals. Uh, if you're gonna compete in a different region, you have to submit uh, a request to the EC office before the middle of, uh, of August. Um, and again, 30% um, of their qualifying um, uh, in that region. So it's uh, a bit of math. Um, it is what it is. You just have to figure it out. And the medal committee decides. Um, okay, so the regional final has three phases. Um, and you must ride the same horse. I don't know why that came into being, but it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> somebody must have tried to pull a fast one at some point, but who knows? Uh, ribbons to eight, um, three phases, jumping uh, flat and a ride off, no change of tack again. Um, and the final results are accumulated from all three and the scores will be announced during prize giving and posted. So, um, a lot of the times for these big uh, regional finals and national finals, they bring in equitation judges from out of the country or from another uh, area. Um, anyways, uh, this is the, the way it's gonna be next this year. Go over fences 10 to 12. Um, order of go will be reverse order. Uh, from the final standing of the qualifying year, scores are announced. And of course you have to wait until the following, till the score is announced before the next horse uh, comes in. Riders and trainers and coaches are permitted to walk the course together. Okay. Plays phase two, top 10. Uh, if you're eliminated, you can return on a score of zero, uh, walk, truck, canter, and three or more additional tests from our list. Uh, every rider receives a score and scores are announced. So yeah, you'll have 10 to sort out. And then in the next one, 
the ride off top six uh, with the combined scores from one and two perform in reverse order of their combined scores if they're tied the rider that um, from phase one in the over fences receives higher placing and of course we'll have four fences and four tests every rider receives a score no scores will no scores will be announced uh, but cumulative scores will be announced during the prize giving so it's lots of fun i always like to watch the uh, regional finals so um national finals um top 16 four 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 and four so Atlantic gets the same as Ontario, as the same as BC, as the same as Prairies. Um, they want to have 16. Uh, I believe the JC medal finals this year is at the Row Winter Fair. Um, not sure. Uh, Hillary, do you know that? Okay, but I, I'm pretty sure they have this, they've gotten the CET because they have the um, they have the CET final, I believe they were awarded that. Um, anyways, they want uh, their 16. So if you can't go or don't want to go and have qualified, they will move up the next one in line. Um, <coughs> so um, if to go to the national, you have to have competed at the regionals. Um, I see that. Uh, maybe you may not end up with 16 but i doubt it um pretty much if you're want to go to the nationals you're going to be showing in the regionals uh and you're not going to have a that much attrition and once you yes fran says that um both the jc and the cet will be at the royal yes i i was pretty sure they were awarded at that to the royal this year and then once you win it you can't do it again which is great I think it's wonderful to uh, to keep uh, encouraging others to um, carry on when you have not had that wonderful success. Okay. Um, national finals, pretty much the same as the regionals. Three phases. You accumulate the scores. Um, um, the uh, where are we here? Pretty much the same as the regional finals. Okay. There you go. Yeah, everything pretty much is the same. You, the coaches can walk the courses. Um, yeah. Pretty much the same as the as the regionals, which is good because it gives the competitors a chance to uh, use that format. Okay, CET, here we come. It's got some changes too. Uh, same thing. Uh, uh, all that's gone, all of that stuff in the red's gone. Uh, EC supplies the medals, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the shows now must. Uh, apply to hold a CET medal, must be at a gold show. Um, they, uh, the same thing as far as if there's a class of three, you award the points according to the scores and um, pretty much the same as the Jump Canada medal as far as that goes. Okay. There you go. No automatic winner if you win a class. Again, because we were having um, classes with only three entries and the one that won was going to be qualified for regionals. And so now you must go into the system and uh, chase your points good, bad, or indifferent, but uh, again, qualifying out of a 30 as opposed to three, uh, it 
should be weighted. There you go. <laughs> Again, uh, provincial, if you need travel uh, monies, uh, check with your provincials. Uh, 20 qualify. All right, all that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, headgear, they've taken out conservative colored uh, with no additional adornments because there's a few sparkly ones out there. I mean, some are traditionalists and they don't like the bling, but that's what happens. Uh, they've also taken out um, uh, that the stirrups, um, can be any color. If you want to have red ones, you can have red ones. If you want to have black ones, you can have black ones. Um, you, you definitely can't affix it to your foot, but uh, that's also in other rules. <laughs> the now it's the same uh, in the CET. It's uh, one for one, and so those guys that touch every side of your competition ring are going to be penalized severely. Uh, this is not a hunter class. This is a jumper class, uh, as we all know, and we need to reward the track. And uh, so time faults are not a good thing. Okay, uh, pretty much the same. Um, the regionals uh, are the same as the JC. Again, if you're eliminated, you can return on a score of zero, uh, one, one penalty for each. Uh, the ride off will be a jump off type course as opposed to, uh, you know, so you're going to be rewarding um, Efficiency, the inside turns, um, you know, within reason, as long as it all works, let's face it. Sometimes if an inside turn doesn't work, well, whoops. But uh, it's now like a jump off as opposed to just looking pretty and being and smiling. Okay, national finals, two days. Uh, again, if you're eliminated from the uh, First phase, you can go, you can keep going with a score of zero, one for one. Your time allowed is 350, which is normal for that level. You're not running around, but you're not touching each side of your arena either. Uh, okay, in the final, uh, cut four. And again, it's a jump off style course. And it's going to be walked during your uh, walk for your jumping phase. So, um, and uh, pretty sure the coaches can do this one too. So you can get some uh, advice from coaches as you're walking. Okay. Now we're into um, schooling rules and all kinds of good things. <laughs> and a few other little housekeeping goodies. So I'll start off in the easy stuff and then I'm going to let Sue talk about some of this. Uh, Sue being- uh, Before we move on, Colleen, uh, yeah. just uh, for the CET, um, I've been prompted here to say that there's no coaches, only for nope. the gymnastics. Oh, okay. Is that, is that, did I miss that or is that in here? Fran, help me here. Fran? Okay. It Yay. doesn't, it Yay. doesn't. Hi. I don't Hi. think. These are changes, yes. but does it say in the original rules that? Uh, yes, it does. It okay. does say in the in the original rules that trainers may only walk the gymnastic phase. Okay. Okay, because these are just changes, so bad me. Yeah. Well, no, but the really the only thing that did change was the uh, ride off. 
itself. The rest of the rules are clarifications. Right. Okay. And we took all the rules that were common to both the CET and the JC metal and put them in the beginning. So tack, equipment, bling, everything is addressed for both metals. Okay. Yeah, and we're getting, getting to that. Okay. Thank you for your input on that. Okay. Next one coming. There we go. All right. So uh, new rule with spurs. Um, of course, we can't use round spurs, which was in there before, but now you can only use one spur on each boot. What prompted that from the FEI? I have no idea. Uh, it, to me, that's like a rule that was made for one person and we're trying to get away from that, uh, I suppose. Now, if somebody asks, you've got a rule written down that you can only have one spur per boot. And the same with whips. Uh, there would be no uh, schooling on the flat with two uh, dressage uh, one only. So there you go. Um, all right. And with Saturday, no restriction on bits, but uh, uh, ground jury based on veterinary advice uh, can say you may not use this bit. Um, again, most of the time sitting in the judge's box, you can't really see what's going on. Um, the stewards are there and seeing these things and can report that to you and uh, you can make a ruling um, if there's no veterinary um, use your stewards for help or um, knowledgeable uh, horsemen in the area. And again, you can just say that's a no, no. Sometimes they, people come up with things that you just like, why? And uh, if you're not sure and you think it's going to cause injury, then you can just say no. And uh, the nose bands again, um, flat leather, um, padding, spine, sheepskin, no metal. And uh, the stewards can check that to make sure that it's uh, not too tight. Yes, that's true. No rope nose bands. Uh, so some of your uh, hackamores and things like that, you'll have to watch for that. Uh, probably not. Uh, again, it came from the FEI, so. Uh, but uh, again, uh, from a judge's point of view, when you're usually a fair a ways away from the competitor and uh, you would you might notice it as they're going around, but more than likely you probably won't. Uh, again, it's up to your stewarding um, uh, people um, to notice these things and amend it before it happens. And again, uh, any uh, infringements on a uh, salary is elimination. So there you go. And uh, again, there's the FEI stewards manual, which you can download and uh, get pictures of all of this good stuff. Uh, the FEI stewards manual is supposed to be coming, Nora. and. Um, we're not sure when they keep threatening to re re release it, but it hasn't come out yet. Okay. Uh, are you ready to come over here? Okay. Uh, we're going into um, again, saddlery. Uh, all right. I can't read what Lisa says. I missed that. Okay. Um, I can read it. Um, I would also say that if you think something is illegal and wasn't caught before coming into the ring, you can always let them go and check when they come out. As Colleen says, it's hard to see fully from the booth. That's right. Sue says, our stewards are the uh, judges, eyes and ears in the back. 
uh, they are very um, current with the current regulations as far as TAC and stuff. So now we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about boot and bandages and boots. So I'm going to let Sue come over here and yell at you from my computer. Oh, wait a minute. All right, she's doing it from there. I'm going to mute myself. Unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm Colleen Scott a figure. I'm gonna go into the other room and then I won't echo on Colleen. Colleen, you have to actually mute your computer. Remember how we did that? <laughs> Okay. Is this going to work if I'm in here? Yeah, actually, that sounds better. I didn't hear an echo that time. Okay. So you're going to have to kind of lead me through this. What do you want me to talk about here, guys? Um, boot and bandage checks are not mandatory for um, EC, but they follow the uh, FEI jumping rules for back boots only. Um, there should be, back boots need to be flat on the inside surface. Uh, they need, to, the um, double shell boots need to be cupped. Um, and it's a very controversial area because um, some of the uh, boots that are now um, sent out are sent out flat, which then are not cupped. And if they do not conform to the, um, the back of the hawk, then basically they're not allowed. So it's, and I'm kind of fighting this with the FEI because it's a very gray, gray area. So um, I would say be very careful when you're um, maybe, going, maybe going to disallow a boot or have an opinion of a second steward if you can have it. It's um, a very, very gray area. Any questions on boots? Not that's popping up. No, okay, and this this hind boot chart is, is really good. I use it all the time. Um, and it's, uh, it's, um, it's really good. Now, pastern straps are now allowed. That is still not changed on there. So a pastern strap is allowed um, there to be the um, kind of the Velcro type, not tight. They have to be used as a protection of the pastern for the horse. So pastern straps are now allowed. Um, heel protectors with incorporated pastern straps, I would say they would now be allowed also on the hinds. Um, and remember, these are all hind boot rules. They're not front boot rules. Um, there's no crossing of the straps on the hind boots. They must be just pulled um, straight across um, and no buckles, no buckles, Velcro studs or hooks only. Okay, next one. Hind boots constructed with or added pressure points are never allowed. So um, the strap cannot be pulled across um, uh, and no mechanism. I caught a pair of um, uh, ratchet boots in January in one of the shows I was doing. And the girl said, um, I went over to her and I said, um, yeah, you can't use those. Oh, but I like them. They're so pretty. And yeah, but they are so illegal because you have, you can over tighten them. So nothing that can be over tightened on the back. Next. Okay. These ones, um, the stitching in this, uh, is it's not a pressure point. So these are fine. There is no pressure points. A pressure point is a bump on the inside and that stitching is not made to be a pressure point. So these type of boots are fine. Next. Um, and this is the correct position for them. Um, the ones on the right of the screen are too high. They will put pressure on the tendon. And also I think that one set looks like they might be a pullback. So make sure when you're watching your boots, make sure that they're in the correct position. 
that they're doing their job. They're there to protect the horse's legs. Next. Yeah, and I've never seen this, but I watch for it. Um, Velcro that has been put onto the inside of the strap so that it um, it's uh, it's in uh, it touches the horse's legs. It's a rough spot, and um, if the horse is sensitive at all, then it causes a sensitivity. So, if you're checking boots, just when I take boots off or when I'm checking boots, I always run my hand across the strap just to make sure that they're they're nice, nice and smooth on the inside. All right, here's a big change and um, it's one that I don't like. Uh, we'll go through here. Um, any poles, any obstacles a meter three or higher must have two poles in cups on the takeoff side of the obstacle, regardless of whether there is a ground rail or not. The lower pole must be below a meter 30. So that really doesn't change other than you must have two poles on the front side of, a, of, a, of an oxer. Um, some people were trying to get away with one, but that is a no. Poles on the takeoff side. Yep. Any questions there? Um, paragraph, pony riders. Well, we don't do a lot of pony events. So um, if you're going to go to FEI and do ponies, uh, read your rules first. That's what I always do. Next. All right. So. And the big change here is, is that if there is enough space, these are schooling, these are um, gymnastic warmups, and we do those in a gymnastics ring. No placing poles may be used with oxers, which has always been there, either on the takeoff side or the landing side. Gymnastics training exercises, as described above, are not allowed during a warm up of competition. And this has always been there, and very, very seldom do I ever have somebody come and ask me to do a gymnastics in a warm up? They will come early in the morning and tell, ask me, EC shows will ask me, can I do, can I set the fences and do a gymnastics? And I will say, yes, I'm watching you put them back at least 30 minutes or 40 minutes before the start of the show. But these can be done at an EC show in the morning before the show is started. Next. Okay, let me see. This is where I have a really hard because these exercises, a minimum of three obstacles height. Let me see. Um, this is the same. This is the same one. Go one more. Okay, ground pull, poles on the ground, as described above, may not be used during a warm up for competition. I have written a letter to EC asking for an extraordinary rule change for EC because, let me just, I don't have, do I have my phone? Because, and I'll give you my reasons, because um, we all use placement poles, which are, which are your 2.5 meter pole in front and a three meter pole front and back to help riders and young horses arc over the fence. And um, so I have written to EC and I've sent Lindsay a copy of this also. And what I have said is, let's see if I can find it, here we are. Okay, and I'm gonna read you this and then any other stewards out there. Um, extraordinary rule amendment, rule FEI 501 5.2 placing poles, which, states that poles on the ground as described above may not be used during warm-up competitions. I would like to see this amended for Equine Canada rules to, to read. Poles on the ground as described above may be used during warm-up for EC competitions. My reasons, are for, my reasons for this are the following. Our warm-up rings in Canada are large and provide safe use for these poles. Placing poles are used in our warm up rings to regulate horses' strides and proper jumping style, especially in our young horse classes. Three, placing poles are used effectively to regulate speed and tempo for young riders warming up for the lower level classes. And four, EC stewards also monitor the use of placing poles in our warm up rings, maintaining a safe and controlled environment. Placing poles used in our warm up rings over vertical fences only 
are a valuable tool for our coaches training their young riders and young horses. I think that little thought has gone into adopting this rule carte blanche for our warm up rings and therefore would like to see it amended immediately. Regards, Susan Hawes. And I really am very strongly opposed to not allowing having placing poles in our EC competitions. In Alberta, we've amended this in our wild rose circuit so they can be used in our warm up rings. Um, if you have any comments, comments, anybody? No comments? So I just think we need to, um, I don't disagree with you, but we need to also keep in mind until they do change it, that this is the rule we're working with. Yeah, and that's what I've done, um, Courtney, is that um, the Wild Rose shows that I have, that I have done is I've said that the rule is okay for this show, but if you go to an EC show, be prepared not to be allowed to use them in the warm up ring because it has been adopted by EC that they are now not allowed when you're warming up for a competition. So I've been telling all the coaches as I go along through my um, provincial shows that I've done this spring and telling them the difference. And hopefully we'll get a ruling on this by the middle of May. Anybody else have any comments, concerns? Um, Agree, disagree? No? Okay. I see a lot of agrees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's carry on here. Um, schooling areas um, make minor change obstacles. Should be significant changes made, should be done. Yeah, it, it, it's like anything else. In, in, when we're doing our schooling areas, um, you know, if, if somebody wants to change, personally, I always um, flag my warm up rings. And if somebody wants to change a jump, then they should come and ask you. Um, in most of the areas that I um, steward, most of my um, coaches and, and riders know that they need to come and ask. It just, for me, it makes a safer environment. Next. Um, That's that's pretty that's pretty straightforward. Anything else? Next. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Colleen. Yep, that's it. We're on the safe sport now, and right on Hillary. Was it me time? <laughs> yeah, it's your time, Hillary. For coaching stuff. All right. <laughs> coaching and safe sport. Coaching and safe sport, yeah. So um, as all you guys know, uh, there is uh, two things that you have to complete on the eCampus this year if you're over the age of 18 or 18 and above. Uh, that's our Fostering Healthy Environments. That's the safe sport course. And there's also a concussions course as well. Um, I would assume that most, most in the room have completed it. Uh, if you are having any issues though, completing those, uh, it's okay. We're working in the background to really uh, fix a lot of those e-campus issues that folks have come across, uh, especially there is that little thing that pops up um, <clears throat> sometimes which won't let you get into there. So just send us an email and we're working through those. Uh, there has been quite a few, so we do apologize on the wait for that, but don't worry, you're not going to lose anything if you don't complete it by the end of the month, it's okay. Um, because that's that's an us issue thing, that's not a you issue thing. So um, yeah, we appreciate your patience on, on that side uh, and um, we will uh, make sure that everybody has access um, ASAP. <clears throat> So, and uh, for the, oh yeah, there it is right there. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course they're in CCP. Uh, hi, Lindsay, yes. Um, if you want to email me directly about that, uh, we can take a peek. I know through, um, there is a little bit of a leg with uh, the eCampus and uh, CAC. So we are working on that too. I'll just pop my email in here. So if anybody does have any questions, uh, they can send me an email and I can certainly either answer them myself if I know it or 
put you in the right direction. So there's my email for everyone. <laughs> so for coach status, um, our vision is that every equestrian coach and instructor is licensed and certified by 2025. Uh, our very basic definition of a coach is a person who provides direct instruction to athletes with the aim of improving their riding abilities. The responsibilities of a coach ensure that the activities are safe and developmentally appropriate for uh, the student in question. <clears throat> so not included, of course, many coaches are engaged in other activities with horses, such as training, uh, the sale, um, provision of boarding services and other activities within the equine industry. Uh, these activities are not included in the definition of coaching. So if anybody was curious about that, it's kind of just the basic definition that we have there for coaching. <clears throat> so we're in the second year of uh, coach status. So for 2022, um, every EC competition, uh, coaches are required to have their registered coach status. Uh, and then we'll move on kind of next year, um, but uh, that's, that's for the future. We'll focus on 2022 right now. <laughs> so uh, we have had a lot of applications uh, for both registered and licensed coach, um, especially in the, in the past little bit uh, with competitions ramping up and things like that. <clears throat> So um, I have some numbers in front of me, and I know this was from December, and uh, it's it's exploded for our coaching gals right now. Um, so I do want to mention that they are quite backlogged. Uh, so if you are worried about your pending status, um, don't worry about the pending status. That's okay. Um, it's uh, yeah, they're they're quite overloaded at the moment, so they're slowly going through the approval process. Um, and they will they will get to you, but don't worry about your pending status. Uh, it's all right. You won't be penalized for that. <clears throat> so the minimum requirements, uh, your rider must indicate who their coach is on the entry form. Before you go on to that, Hillary, um, Nora just has a question. How are we monitoring this? Oh, that's I, I do have some. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I have some points uh, coming up here. Let me just see here as well. Yes, yes. And I, I do have some some points on that too. Yeah, yep, yep. These are all in my little my little blurb here. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So your minimum requirements, the rider must indicate who their coach is on the entry form. So um, they can certainly be self-coached as well, but they do have to specify that. <clears throat> so individuals who are self-coached are to be the only person authorized to speak with organizers and officials with regards to the competition as, as the self-coach. Um, for participants under the age of majority, they must either be accompanied by a recognized coach or a legal parent, guardian, caregiver must be present on showgrounds to act on their behalf. So this role cannot be delegated. So I think that answers one of our questions there in the chat, which is great. <clears throat> so for competition expectations, we're really going for education and engagement. That's our priority over enforcement at this point. Uh, EC will be getting a process to flag and follow up with coaches um, not compliant with this rule. This is on our end, not to worry about it for our competition organizers out there. <clears throat> so, oh, I already mentioned that one. That one's good too. <laughs> Some of these are repetitive as I as I chat. Uh, organizers are required to have the coach status information in their prize list uh, and collect coach information on entry forms. So it's really the entry forms where we're going to be getting this information, and that's going to be filtered back to us, and then we'll follow up directly with those with those folks. <clears throat> uh, EC officials. Oops, While you're talking about that, um, parents that coach have to only coach their own children, they can't coach other people's children, correct? Uh, I mean, they essentially could if they were mentioned on the other kids. But they have to be a... Yeah. But then they'd have to be a, a licensed. They, they would have to have their coach status. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so EC officials may request a person's a person's coach status information if it does assist them to navigate specific situations. Uh, so that's an option that you guys uh, can have. Um, if you're out there, oh, I see, hold on. We have a, a few 
screen here. Uh, let me just see if we can get this one here. Just ask if they, did we, did we answer that question there? Perhaps we did. Some people have asked me if they can to get around that rule. Is that kind of what we just went yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> uh, EC will be solicit and appreciates feedback from organizers and officials, especially how things are working on site. So please uh, provide us with all the information um, that you have, good, both good and bad. Um, we know it'll come. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing that and improving uh, in the future uh, years as we go on. Did you say? OK, so Nicole, yeah. So if we do have a minor, um, you can have kind of either. So. But the, if they are having the coach and it's not their parent or legal guardian, then the coach needs to have coach status. Needs to have that registered coach status. I think I clarified that for you. Let me know if I didn't. <laughs> so our expectations for this implementation, uh, emphasis should be on education and shared commitment of all within EC to create safe, welcoming and inclusive environments for participants. Um, yeah, and uh, it's it's going to be consequences of non-compliance will be progressive. So we're going to start with your warnings and really educate folks on why coach status is um, is needed and basis of it is safe sport. Um, we've all heard everything that's kind of going on in both the equestrian world and other sports uh, stuffs coming up. So we're really trying to get uh, ahead of that and make sure that everybody has their safe sport and knows uh, what's good to go for that. So yeah, that's kind of my little chat about it. Um, I am not the coach that is <laughs> expert. That is our coaching gals. So I will pop in <clears throat> the coaching email as well. Just in case, you can still email me directly because I might be able to answer some of the simpler questions. Um, but if you kind of have anything uh, um, not as simple, you might want to ask the coaching gals first. But anyway, if there's any further questions, uh, just let us know. And if not, I think I am all set with the coach size. Great. And I believe that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, if anybody has any more questions or anything else. Then we'll be done for the day. Thank you all for attending. Awesome. And I Thank hope it was for coming. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I didn't bore you half to death, but uh, sorry that my computer is a little lacking in um, uh, some of its audio qualities. Um, and uh, hopefully that helps you out. Definitely um, for the coaches, uh, parents, members, uh, review your rules before you show so that if something happens, you know what to do. That's uh, pretty much all I can say. And thanks again for coming. Thank you.